Paris was dubbed the brothel of Europe in the late 19th century because it was crazy beyond measure. The Palace of Versailles, the pinnacle of wealth, splendor, and authority. It's not surprising that the Chateau of Versailles has a shady past given its stature, as one of Europe's most significant and breathtaking architectural marvels. Behind the shining surface of the aristocracy and royal court, there lurked a darker world of depravity and passion, covering an area of 75,000 square meters, or roughly 15 football fields, with 2,300 chambers and spectacular, exquisite gardens. France had more than 300 legalized brothels and masons in the city between the 18th and 19th centuries. French kings and aristocracy had courtesans and mistresses for ages. However, things really took off after the Sun King built the Palace of Versailles, which he and his subjects used as a place of pleasure until the French Revolution, because they both loved to have kinky fun. Louis occupied himself with several scandalous gross relationships, had his own secret brothel in the royal gardens, and bed five aristocratic sisters. That's absurd, bro, he fathered at least 30 illegitimate children some of which he never knew because he lost count. This is History Rediscovered, to support please subscribe. The Dirty Secret Brotholes of the Palace of Versailles Women were knowledgeable of the seduction arts. The prostitutes that worked in the Versailles brothels weren't your typical workers. Several of them were also gifted musicians, dancers, and actors, and they were well-schooled and accomplished in the art of seduction. The reality of their working conditions was far from glamorous, despite the exterior. They were vulnerable to violence and sickness, as well as abuse and exploitation. In spite of this, many women chose to work in the brothels since it was one of the few opportunities available to them in a culture where they had few other possibilities for making a decent life. The patrons of the Versailles brothels were a varied group. Everybody were welcome to partake in the delights on offer, whether they were aristocrats, courtiers, warriors, or commoners. Men went to these brothels for a variety of reasons. For one, having relations outside of marriage was frowned upon, thus the brothels offered men a secure setting in which to pursue their fantasies. Also, it was a way for men to demonstrate their status and masculinity, because being able to afford such encounters was regarded as a symbol of success and riches. Versailles brothels were not your typical establishments. They went all out to create a decadent environment by being lavish and ostentatious. Consider lavish velvet couches, elaborate artworks, and beautiful chandeliers. The secret passages and alcoves, however, are where the action really happens. Think of elaborate four-poster beds and private spaces where the elite could indulge their most ardent fantasies. The splendor of the time and the wealth and power of the customers who frequented the brothels were directly reflected in the luxury of the establishments. The scandalous disturbing connection between Versailles brothels and the French court. Men could not just satisfy their cravings in the brothels of Versailles. They were also a hub of scandal and political intrigue. High-ranking officials or courtiers were frequently the guys who frequented these places, and the knowledge they picked up could be used to advance their political aspirations. Moreover, politicians and courtiers frequently utilized their knowledge of others' transgressions to their advantage, utilizing brothels as a tool for blackmail and coercion. Nuns and coquettes coexisted peacefully in convents in earlier centuries, but when King Philip II's wife learned that the nicely dressed young woman she hugged during the sign of peace in the church was a courtesan, Philip forbade the women of brothels from wearing coats and ordered them to wear belts as a symbol of their profession. If you're thinking, well, that's not too far, it's because Philip was considerate to make it easier for customers to repent after visiting a brothel. He also mandated that a brothel be situated at least 300 meters from a church. The first ruler to control the brothels in Paris was Philip II. But, Louis IX expelled them entirely from Paris and compelled them to live beyond the city limits. As a result of their location on the city's outskirts, brothels came to be known as bordels, giving rise to the name brothel. The idea of the red light district was created because these establishments had to display a red lantern outside the door as a symbol of their labor. It was clear that the Sun King would bring back the relationship between brothels and royalty when he took over the repair of the hunting lodge his father had established. It's difficult to list all of the great Sun King's mistresses because he had so many. 
The list of famous lovers is endless and includes the Marquise de Montespan, Louise de la Valia, Marie Angelique de Scarales, and many more. King Louis XIV was harsh on prostitutes despite adoring them. The forests beyond the magnificent grounds of the palace served as the prostitute's workplace, making the profession a genuine horse under Louis XIV's reign. Although it was legal for him to have mistresses, he wasn't especially fond of this work's movement as a whole. The fact that the palace's workers frequently got sick, and caused delays in the construction processes led to the establishment of strict borders within the palace. In this way, he removed prostitutes from the legal protection of the state without necessarily meaning to achieve his goals. He was forced to take more drastic action because nothing changed, like he did. Therefore, he passed a legislation mandating that any night worker detained going forward be publicly whipped as their customers were stripped of their noses and ears. The workers moved to special hotels in Versailles and Paris despite the fact that the policy was challenging to accomplish because Versailles was so large and the Swiss Guard patrolling the region was insufficient. In fact, the distinctive locations introduced an exterior laurel wreath so that the clients might recognize them. Disease Sexually transmitted disease were best friends with the people who resided in the Palace of Versailles. One of those illnesses that no one talked about but that everyone was aware of was syphilis. Being intimately transferred was forbidden, which is strange considering that liaisons and adultery were not only frequent but also condoned. The French pox was another moniker for syphilis that was widely used throughout Europe, though it is unlikely that the French would have liked it. It was known as the Neapolitan disease in France. Syphilis was a particularly unpleasant illness that could not be concealed from the public. Patients initially experienced painful genital sores, which could later progress to blindness, paralysis, and it was not unusual for the nose to just collapse into the face. This second symptom signaled the emergence of artificial noses that could be painted, or enameled to resemble the real one as closely as possible. Mercury was the only treatment used by doctors to combat this terrible illness throughout the 17th century, and it goes without saying that they were not particularly successful. As a result, their patients had mercury poisonings, which were accompanied by excessive salivation. The proverb, a night with Venus, a lifetime with mercury, was born out of this treatment. The fact that syphilis was a slow murderer made matters worse. It was immediately assumed that everyone who contracted the disease had lived a life of excess because it was sexually transmitted. In certain instances, it was the fact, and as French noblemen never disdained the elite brothels of Paris, it is highly plausible. However, other people led perfectly honorable lives and were only contaminated by their cheating spouse. Syphilis was unquestionably viewed by Louis XIV's aristocratic court as a punishment from God for a life that had been poorly lived. Syphilis was regarded as a disease of debauchery that trailed armies like flies do a dung heap in addition to being a sickness of debauchery. In a battle between two troops of 30,000 men each, 25,000, according to Voltaire, had syphilis. By 1736, the issue was so urgent that Louis VIII, royal physician Gina Struck dedicated one of his greatest works to it. Unfortunately for the Versailles courtiers, syphilis was still an incurable illness in 1928. These courtiers had syphilis. Prince of Constance Francois Louis de Bourbon, Duchess of Chartres Henriette de Bourbon, and Louis Joseph the Duchess of Uses.